Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> Today I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, but tomorrow, oh, glorious tomorrow, I shall see as in the light of the morning when the sun riseth even after rain. Today my soul may be bowed down. Disappointment, heartbreak. But tomorrow, and remember, there will be a tomorrow. And I take the wings of the morning. Today my tears have been my meat, but in the morning, in the morning, will I direct my prayers and will look up and he will give me the victory. Remember, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Sorrow does not control life. The overcoming life is greater than sorrow. And through the gate of sadness we pass into a richer, a sweeter, a finer life. Always remember that. After the shadow of night, morning breaketh. Night comes before the unfolding beauty of a dawning day. There must be a night before the breaking of the day, before the sunrise. And the overcoming life is triumphant over sadness. It's victorious in and over sorrow. Weeping may endure for a night, and you may be going through that night, this very hour, while I'm speaking, speaking to you, weeping until the tears will no longer flow, weeping until the prayer is only a sigh, only an unspoken emotion. But remember something, joy cometh in the morning, and there's always morning. There will always be a daybreak. And you'll never, I promise you, no man, no woman need ever be defeated unless you consent to that defeat. For God knows no defeat. Well, today I wish to talk with you about something that's vitally important to each of us, if you are a part of humanity, <laughs> if you are a, a living human being, if the old heart is still beating, there's life in the body, then you can be dead sure that you're still a part of humanity, and if you are, there'll be problems in your life, there'll be conflict. Oh, There'll be nights. There'll be times when you'll almost feel defeated. That's why I want to talk with you today about an uncomplicated and effective method for handling the problems of life, which sometimes seems so very overwhelming. Oh, have you felt that... The waters are overflowing. Have you felt that you have literally come to the edge of your Red Sea and there was no way forward and no way backward? Have you ever come to the place where you felt that the night would never end? You could see no morning light whatsoever. You felt that surely the day would never break. All right. Let me tell you something. 
Try asking God about it. I have a feeling, both from personal experience and by reason of observation, that oftentimes we struggle much, oh, much, much too hard with life's problems. The struggle is terrific. We try to solve them in our own strength. There's a slang expression that goes like this. Easy does it. And I have to remind myself of it over and over again. What I'm talking to you about today, I have to practice myself. That's the reason I can talk to you about these things. Because one cannot give to another any more than that one has experienced himself. You can't talk to another about his problems unless you've had problems. You can't talk to another about sorrow unless you have had sorrow. You can't talk to another about a broken heart unless your heart sometime or another has been broken. This easiness of approach does not in any sense minimize the seriousness of the problems. Know that. I wouldn't tell you for one minute that your problem wasn't serious. I wouldn't minimize your trouble for anything in the world because the troubles in life are serious. They're real. And essentially, we're not very strong. I don't care how strong you may feel that you are very often in a moment of crisis you'll find out that you're mighty weak. And essentially none of us are very strong. Neither can we boast of our strength. Because we're flesh and we're blood. And the problems of life are solid and substantial. And while we may handle some of them, yet the con Continuous accumulation of these problems can easily overwhelm us at times. Strain is likely to develop, and the flow of personality is interrupted. Perceptiveness is blocked. Solutions elude us. And we get to a point where we are defeated, beaten at a loss, a total loss, unless we can connect ourselves with a power and a person greater than ourselves. Sooner or later you've got to get to the place where you have got to make a connection with a power that is greater than human power, a strength that is greater than human strength, a wisdom that is greater than the wisdom of man, a knowledge that is greater than man's knowledge. You and I have to get our help sooner or later from one who knows no limit to his Power and that one is our Heavenly Father. And we get that strength and we get that power and we get that help through Jesus Christ our Lord as we go through Him directly to the Father's throne. It's that simple. It's just like that. Try asking God. Three words. Try asking God. And this simple technique might be referred to as a golden key. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And I have seen it work 
over and over and over again in my own life and in the lives of literally thousands and thousands of people. Because this advice comes from the highest authority in heaven and earth. Try asking God. You've asked the psychiatrist. You've asked the physician. You've asked the marriage counselor. You've asked the neighbor. You've asked your closest friend. You've asked an in-law. You've asked everybody under the sun. But you have not yet asked of the one who is the real source, the only one who can help you. And it's so simple. Just try asking God. Mm-hmm. We were talking about prayer the other day. And always remember something. No prayer is lost. Always remember that. There is no such thing as prayer unanswered or unnoticed by God. And some things that we count denials are simply delays. God always answers our prayers and there is no too late with Him. Never. We talk about help coming too late. We talk about food coming too late. We talk about medical help coming too late. We talk about some supply having come too late. If only it had come sooner. Then that one's life would have been spared then the plane would not have gone down. Then there would not have been that shipwreck. How often we talk about things coming too late. But remember something. God always answers our prayers and His timing is perfect. There are no too lates with Him. Oh, I marvel at God's timing. The more I grow spiritually, the longer I live, the more I marvel at God's perfect timing. Maybe I am so conscious of timing is because I'm on radio all the time and I have to watch the second hand. On television before the cameras. I have to watch my timing. Services. I'm very conscious of timing. Catching planes constantly. I'm conscious of timing, timing, timing. Making connections. Maybe that is one reason that I'm so very conscious of timing and that God's timing means so much to me. And I'm so very conscious of it. His planes always run on time. <laughs> yeah. His, uh, his, uh, uh, time schedule is always perfect. Yeah. Nothing is ever canceled. He never cancels out. Never. Always be dead sure he never cancels out because of bad weather or storms. No. Uh-uh. But sometimes I get a little impatient. It's like sitting in an airport. I'm ready to go. I'm all ready to go. But maybe I'm a half hour ahead of time. Now, just because I'm a half hour ahead of time, I can't get on that plane and say, well, I'm here now, let's go, you know. No, it's not like that. Sometimes we try to give God orders. 
And we say, now, Lord, we're all ready to go right now. Right now, we're all ready. Let's go. We want it this very minute. Now, you and I do not give God the orders. If we did, if it was in our power to give God the orders and command Him, then we would be greater than God. But who are we to give orders and command one who is perfect wisdom, perfect knowledge, who knows what is best for us. The thing for us to do is to be patient and wait for His perfect timing in the answer to that prayer. Simple? Oh, sure, the whole thing thing is so simple. It's a simple technique. The golden key. As simple as the words of Jesus when he said, Ask, and it shall be given you. It may not be given you at the exact moment that you ask. Some people, you know, are so impatient and we're living in such a fast generation. Oh, we shove, then we push, and fast, 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 fast. We go at such a rate of speed. Now, our rate of speed will not control God or the heavens. Wait patiently. Go through the Word of God. Over and over again, we're told to be patient, to wait upon the Lord. To tell you that it's easy sometimes? No, it isn't. We want everything right now. We walk into a department store, and we want the clerk to service immediately. Oh, the impatience that I find in this generation. It's appalling. Try it sometime. See for yourself how true the very things that I'm saying to you are reenacted in your own area. Go into a department store perhaps not wishing to buy anything yourself, but watch the average customer. She'll walk up to a counter. And if the clerk has her back turned, you'll hear the customer say, Miss, Miss! Miss! If she would have waited only a second, the clerk would have turned around of her own accord. But the customer couldn't wait a split second. Go into a restaurant. I see it every day because I eat most of my meals in restaurants. Sometimes I'm terribly disturbed by the way customers will treat a waitress a great big burly man who isn't really going any place. Not really. He hasn't anything much to do but puff away on his old cigar. But the minute he sits down, if the waitress isn't right there to serve him, You'll hear his voice, Miss! Say there, Miss! You know. Can't wait. Why? I get terribly amused at these people. 
It's a red light. They're really not going any place. I've watched them. When they get to where they're going, they'll stop and take all the time in the world to get out of the car. There's nothing really important, but if everybody is stopped at a red light, and if the first car doesn't move the second that it turns green, they start blowing the horn. Now, you don't treat God like that. God always answers our prayers. Always. And there are no too late with him. <laughs>